For the Vintage Advent Calendar Day 7, we're going to be looking at the work of Helen Dryden. Now, back in the day before expensive photo shoots and overpaid supermodels, Vogue magazine used to have illustrated front covers. The ones you can see here are all by one artist, Helen Dryden. Here she is. Isn't she cool? Now Dryden studied landscape painting for four years before switching over to fashion design. Largely self-taught in this field, she moved to New York in 1909 to try and get work as a fashion illustrator in magazines, but she faced constant rejection. She was especially downcast when Vogue showed zero interest in her work. But within a year, Condé Nast publications took over control of Vogue magazine and asserted some major changes. They saw Dryden's work and loved it, and soon she was illustrating Vogue fashion spreads and front covers. Her relationship with Vogue lasted 13 years, all through the golden age of illustration, and it turned out some stunning images. Now an in-demand illustrator, Dryden also designed front covers for other leading magazines such as Vanity Fair and Delineator, which are particularly cool. Alongside her print career, Dryden also designed costumes and sets for theatre shows and a range of homeware for the Revere Corporation. In the 1930s, she worked for Studebaker designing car interiors, reportedly being paid $100,000 a year. That was a huge sum of money in those days, and she was considered one of the top industrial designers. No mean feat for a woman. The adverts for the vehicles proudly stated, styled by Helen Dryden. Then, by 1940, she dropped off the radar completely. Nothing was seen or heard from her. Almost two decades later, the New York Times found her living in a $10 a week hotel room paid for by the welfare department. She said she had suffered a deep personal shock, had lost her ability to work and spent all of her savings. A surprising end to a remarkable woman who was once the highest paid female artist in America. As we look back at Dryden's work, it's clear to see that her name should be remembered and celebrated as much as the other leading illustrators of the time, like Barbier and Erte. Her body of work is simply sensational. 